Hello, welcome to Effective Testing Approaches for your application. My name is Cecilia Martinez. I'm a Technical Account Manager at Cypress.io. Cypress.io is a testing framework for anything that runs in a browser. And I spend my day talking to our users, helping them overcome challenges in their testing suite, helping them understand their testing strategy, and helping them make the most of their tests so that they can reach their goals. Today, I'd like to share with you some of the things that I've learned uh, from those interactions and how you can decide what testing approaches make the most sense for your web or software application. A little bit more about me. I'm also a volunteer with Women Who Code and Out in Tech, which supports the LGBTQIA plus community in tech. You can find me on Twitter and on GitHub at Cecilia Creates. So, a little bit first about testing in general. Testing is the best way to understand your application. When you write tests for your application, you really need to have a granular comprehension of how it works, how your user is going to interact with it, and what it means to be working successfully. I like to say that bad code can't hide from good testing. So good testing will not only ensure that your application is working, but it can kind of unearth those skeletons that are hidden throughout your code base. So it's important to not only have a testing strategy, but to ensure that you're actually writing effective tests. Before you can decide what approach to take with your testing strategy, you have to actually define the primary goal or goals for your test suite. This is a question that I ask a lot of our users and not everybody always has an answer. You know, what is it that you're looking to accomplish with the tests that you write? These are some of the goals that I hear from people and uh, definitely some of the more common goals that you may have for your testing suite. The first is to ensure that the business logic of your app is airtight, right? Making sure that all of your functions are working appropriately and that you're gonna have the expected outcome based on certain inputs. Another goal is to validate that components on your front end behave and render appropriately. Another goal that I see a lot is making sure that the different parts of your application work together. So is the front end and the back end, are they working in harmony? Are they connected well? Another goal is confirming that the application looks as expected. You know, you spend a lot of time wrangling and fighting with that CSS and you wanna make sure that those styles that you've implemented are actually appearing as they should in your application. You know, if they look the same across different browsers or on new mobile viewport versus desktop viewport, these are all things that testing can help you accomplish. Now we're kind of getting into more high level goals that aren't specific to a part of your application. So for example, this is a really big one, ensuring that the application works for your user. If your user goes to your website and they can't, for example, uh, log in, or if they can't add an item to their shopping cart, that's a really big problem, right? You need to ensure that when your user visits your application, it's gonna work as expected every single time. A big one I hear, and again, this is a more high level goal, is preventing bugs or regressions in production. So testing your application helps you to catch these bugs or catch errors and regressions before they actually reach your user. You never wanna see those in live production. You wanna catch those as soon as they happen by testing your app early and testing your app often. And then finally, uh, reducing developer time spent on debugging. So again, the more bugs you have in production, the more time that you have to spend understanding where they came from and how to fix them. And then having confidence in your deployments. So if you're going to release, if you've made any changes to your code base, understanding that it's not gonna break anything for the end user and that you can really feel comfortable pushing that button to release. So these are some of the testing goals. Now, how do you take different types of testing to approach these, right? Because different types of testing are gonna achieve different goals. So I wanna go through these goals and talk about what types of testing you can use to achieve them. The first goal is ensuring that the business logic of your app is airtight. 
So unit tests and API tests can help you accomplish this goal. So unit tests cover individual units of your code. So that would be individual functions. Um, API tests cover endpoint functionality. So these are very specific small tests um, that cover one, one the type of behavior for that unit. So they're typically really easy and fast to write because they're only dealing with one specific unit. They can also be used to address edge cases that are hard to replicate in production or in your UI. However, there's a lot of tests are required to get full application coverage. So as you can imagine, if you're a unit test covers an individual unit, if you have thousands and thousands of units across your application code base, then you're also going to need thousands and thousands of tests to get the coverage that you want. Additionally, there is not necessarily any guarantee that the individual units will work together or that it's going to result in a functioning application. You know, um, kind of you can have all the individual pieces working together, but if you put them to, <laughs> working independently, but when you put them together, it could all fall apart. The next goal is making sure that the different parts of your app work together, right? So we just talked about how with unit tests, you don't necessarily get that desired outcome. So how can you make sure that you're achieving this goal? So this is done with integration tests and contract testing. So integration tests cover the relationship between parts of your code. So you know, does the front end connect well with the back end? If you have large classes with multiple methods, are they working well together with other classes on the front end? Contract testing is a newer type of testing that I've seen that covers your application's connection to external APIs or microservices. This is becoming more popular as you know, microservices become more popular and we're seeing that a lot with modern applications. So this type of testing, it can confirm important implementations function as expected, right? So if it's really important to you that your, your payment processor is, is working correctly with your application, then you're gonna to wanna to make sure you have a test that covers that. It also ensures that changes in one part of the application don't break another area. So if you change part of your login flow, you may not even realize that it could have a it could have a cause a problem maybe in your user profile section, or sometimes it can even cause issues with, with authentication or with apps, areas of the application that you can access. So integration tests will ensure that the entire thing is all working together appropriately. It's also really useful for critical functionality of the application. Like we talked earlier about you know, not being able to add an item to your shopping cart. If there's parts of your app where it's really important that you have those covered and making sure that they're working together properly, integration tests can be really helpful there. All right, so the next goal is validating that components behave and render appropriately. So uh, no surprise here, but component testing is useful for testing your components, right? So they cover the components of your application, but specifically, ensure that the components can handle different props or parameters that are being passed through appropriately and that they render as you would expect. This is particularly critical for multi-use components that are leveraged across your application. So if you have, for example, a complex form component that can accept a lot of different information and props and is used in multiple places or maybe a nav bar component that's leveraged across your application, these are gonna be really important to have good component tests for. It's particularly relevant for modern component-based frameworks like React, Angular, and Vue. And especially if you're using an internal component library that you know, may be used across multiple different projects at your organization, good component testing can be really important here too. So uh, the only thing is that it doesn't address user flows across components, right? These are like unit tests, but for your components. So they're not gonna, ensure that everything works together, but it's gonna ensure that those individual components are functioning properly. So the next uh, type of testing I wanna cover actually encompasses a, quite a few goals. So let's take a look at these goals specifically. So confirming the application looks as expected, ensuring the application works for your user, preventing bugs and regressions in production, reducing developer time spent on debugging, 
and having confidence in deployments. So uh, what type of testing can encompass all of these goals? Visual and functional end-to-end -end tests cover your application like a user would. So when you have a end-to-end -end test that encompasses both functional assertions and then also visual assertions, you're interacting with your application the same way that your user would interact with your application. I really like this quote uh, from Kent C. Dodds. He wrote a blog post about um, kind of different types of tests that you can write. And he says, while end-to-end -end tests may be slower and more expensive than unit tests, they bring you much more confidence that your application is working as intended because this is, and the magic behind it is because it's gonna operate just like your user would, right? Any other type of testing that you're writing, it's working like a computer would. So with end-to-end -end tests, especially if you're incorporating that visual testing uh, is really gonna have that critical experience and best replicate the experience of your user. So some of the things uh, kind of about this type of testing, you can typically achieve high application coverage with fewer tests. So end-to-end -end tests tend to be longer and you can include multiple assertions. And especially, like I said, if you're using a visual, um, visual testing tool as well, you're able to get a lot of coverage over the critical paths of your application without having to write those thousands and thousands of unit tests. You can check application functionality and appearance at the same time. So with an end-to-end -end test, if you're stepping through the application flow you know, on each page, along the way, you can also make assertions against the visual appearance in the same exact test. So you're able to, you know, handle both of those types of assertions with one single test and make that test more efficient for you. It really helps to keep your user happy and critical application paths working. I like to call these the money paths, you know, the, where if it breaks, you don't get paid. <laughs> so that would be things like your shopping cart flow, you know, being able to purchase a course if you have like a, a learning platform. Those are things that you're are critical for your users to be able to do. And it's important to make sure that those are working. And uh, kind of going back to that quote that Ken C. Dodds talked about how end-to-end -end tests are, you know, more expensive and time-consuming. With modern tooling, you know, it actually makes writing end-to-end -end tests a lot faster and easier. There's a lot of great tools out there um, that allow you to kind of have this experience where you're writing tests that are less flaky, more reliable, and giving you that experience that your user would have. So there's a lot of different approaches to testing that you may have seen. The traditional one that we see is the testing period or pyramid, right? So you have your unit tests on the bottom because they're the easiest and the quickest to write. So you should have a lot of those. And then going up the pyramid, you have the integration tests and then end-to-end -end tests on the very top because those are the hardest to write and you shouldn't need as many of them. That's kind of the traditional approach that we see. Uh, there's also the testing trophy. This is developed by Kent C. Dodds. Um, and it's, you know, the same person who just said that quote that we talked about uh, has a lot of great, great educational content around testing. So he designed this kind of testing trophy where the bulk of tests are your integration and your unit tests that kind of validate that the application or the different units are working together. Uh, with a foundation of static testing, which actually happens in your IDE by catching you know, type errors while you write the code. And then capping on top is those end-to-end -end tests that verify functionality. There's also the testing crab. This was uh, developed by Gleb Bamatov uh, from Cypress. And this essentially gauges testing types based on speed and effectiveness. So his recommendation or his framework is essentially Functional and visual end-to-end -end tests, making up the primary of your test suite, built on a foundation of component tests, unit tests, and API tests. So again, if you have a component library with some of those multi-use, really complex components, having tests for that, having unit tests around the critical business logic of your application to ensure that, that those parts are firing correctly, and then also API tests. So testing the endpoints that are gonna be leveraged by the front end of your application and ensuring not only that they're working properly, but that they're returning the correct responses and are gonna allow your user to keep progressing through, through their, their user flow as uh, seamless as possible. So, you know, there's all these different types of approaches. There's all these different types of testing that you can use. 
and going, but I want to go back to kind of what I said earlier in that different types of testing achieve different goals. So once you have your goals defined, and once you know the architecture of your application, that's going to drive what types of testing that you use and what types of testing you leverage most. So if your goal is to primarily prevent uh, bugs in, in production and allow your user to use your application, then that functional and visual you know, end-to-end -end testing is gonna help you achieve that goal. And you may wanna spend more time there. If your application leverages a really a, a component library and maybe you have an internal component library at your organization, that's used across hundreds of projects, or you know, that's where you're really going to want strong component testing, especially if they're complex multi-use components. And then if you have an application with really complex business logic, maybe you have a fintech app that's doing really complex calculations on different types of transactions, or maybe you have a super complex data model that has multiple levels and that a lot of interactions, then you're going to really want strong unit tests around that functionality to make sure that that you know, that, that, that business logic is, is activating and working in the right way. So really, it's not just a taking a pyramid or taking a trophy or taking a crab and throwing it at, at your application and hoping for the best. It's letting your goals and letting your software application architecture define the strategy that you take. So you may end up with you know, with, with the crab, or you may end up with maybe the component testing leg of the crab is much, much bigger, uh, but it's gonna look different depending on, on your actual organization. So it's really important to remember that you structure your test suite based on your goals. So once you've decided how to approach your test strategy and you've decided, you know, the types of testing that you're going to do and which what that structure is gonna look like as far as which area is gonna have the most tests or have less tests? You know, how do you measure that it's effective? So the thing that I like talk to people a lot about is test coverage. And there's typically two types of test coverage. The first that I talk about is code coverage. So code coverage tools allow you to programmatically um, kind of review what parts of your application code is being touched when a test is run. And so you can actually measure and say, when I run my tests, I am covering you know, 80%, 90%, 100% of my application. And so this allows you to say, you know, and you, and you don't necessarily have to shoot for 100%, but if you know that the core functionality of your application is covered with end-to-end -end tests, then you can use integration tests to kind of fill out the rest of the features on your application that maybe don't require as much of, of intense coverage, right? The other thing that you can leverage is case coverage. So case coverage is specific to how you define test cases. And this could come from your development team, from even from your product team, from your quality team. But essentially this is gonna be defined as the user stories or the use cases that you want to ensure are working. And you may use a test case management system, or maybe it's just an Excel spreadsheet, but essentially you would track and ensure that you have tests that correspond to those use cases. The, uh, so to, regardless of what strategy you take, regardless of how you measure the success of the test, the important thing is that you need to be writing tests, right? Because like I said before, bad code can't hide from good testing. Uh, so if you want to ensure that your code is of the best quality and that your user is going to have the best experience, it's really important to make sure that you're writing some kind of test, no matter what they are. Uh, so I love this quote by uh, Gil Tayar. It's kind of a paraphrase, uh, but he says, you know, if you don't feel confident pushing the release button, write more tests. He says, keep writing tests until you feel confident, because that's what test writing is really all about. It's about giving you confidence to deploy and knowing that you didn't break anything, knowing everything is gonna work for your user and knowing that your code is quality. So this has been Effective Testing Approaches for your application. Again, I'm Cecilia Martinez. Um, you can find out more about me at Cecilia Creates and you can find out more about Cypress um, at cypress.io. 
Cypress, as I said, is a testing framework for anything that runs in a browser. It provides end-to-end -end testing, component testing, and you can also leverage it for API testing as well. And it is a free and open source test runner. Thank you very much.